Hello, and welcome to the Q3 results presentation for Bioscient. My name is Rene Gorham, and I'm the president and CEO of the company. I wanted to start today's presentation with a look at our sales results, EBITDA, and net income after tax for the quarter ended September 30th. So this quarter represented our 33rd consecutive profitable quarter. We had some mixed results on the top line with Canadian pharmaceutical business growing 11%, our international pharma business down 51%, and our legacy business down 56%. All of that added up to a, a sales result of 3% below year ago at $5.26 million. Our EBITDA was 1.73 million, just 1% below year ago, and our net income after tax 1.27, down 2% versus year ago. I'll speak a little bit more in detail about what drove those results in a couple of minutes. Through nine months, our sales are up 5% versus year ago, once again led by the Canadian pharmaceutical business at plus 13, international pharma down 15%, and legacy down 44%. So a couple of comments there. So you see versus the quarter performance, the nine month performance is down 15%. So we did have a strong start to the year, and we do see from time to time business come from one quarter into the next. We certainly were expecting some more shipments into international customers in Q3. We had orders and we've had some issues with our customers receiving import permits. So I, I'll go into a little bit more detail on that. That has caused some choppiness to our Q3 results and also, quite frankly, to the results year to date. And we see that likely continuing for the short term. Uh, but not the long term as we're still confident that we can grow that business. Our legacy business was working against a couple of strong years. Uh, as you know, we don't invest against that business. It uh, is, is a business that, that has not proven to be promotionally sensitive. So we essentially have a maintenance strategy uh, for a couple of years. We've had strong performance uh, this year, uh, some environmental con conditions in key markets has uh, led to the business coming down uh, significantly, though this was not a result of competitive activity. It's the, some of the ebbs and flows in the commodity markets in agriculture. Our EBITDA was up 7% through nine months at uh, $5.3 million and our net income after tax up 8%, just over 4 million. So taking a closer look at the pharmaceutical business, this is a look at the last uh, 20 quarters, so the last five years of our pharma business. I've used this uh, slide for quite some time in the past. Um, you see, uh, represented by the blue tips, our international pharmaceutical business. So uh, looking back, uh, say, as far as Q3 of 2016, you see the uh, pharma business outside of Canada represented up to 13% of total revenue in the quarter and that that number has bounced around somewhere between 8% uh, and 15% uh, over that period of time. So as I've spoken out about before, there is some lumpiness in this business. We get large orders. Sometimes those, the, the shipment of those orders is delayed. Sometimes there are other factors that will cause delay. What we're experiencing recently are some new, some new phenomena that, uh, that include uh, issues around import permits and access to for our customers to have a sufficient foreign currency to purchase product from us. So the net result is that uh, in Q3 2018, the international pharma business represented just 6% of our total sales for the quarter. And obviously on a, on a year ago basis was a sig significant uh, shortfall. So let's look a little bit deeper at uh, some of the, uh, the upsides and downsides for the quarter. So overall, the pharmaceutical business was just a shade under $5 million. It was up 4% versus Q3 of 2017. In Canada, that was 4.71 million, up 11% versus last year. And uh, measured in units, that was uh, represented growth by Feramax of 9%. Feramax powder of 5%, Repigyne of 
by 29% growth, Cathagel 32%, and the Agaton system 216% in the quarter. So that was offset by the shortfall in the international business for Ferramax, which uh, delivered 282,000 in sales, uh, approximately half of what it was a year ago. So I wanted to give one example. We had uh, one shipment, a fairly significant uh, shipment that would have had a about a four or five percent impact on the quarter itself uh, in in total sales. We had that order ready to ship in June as it had been requested by our customer. They had a challenge getting the permit. Uh, that permit uh, did not arrive until uh, the fourth quarter and we have now uh, finally shipped that order. So you can see that uh, we had a five month delay for that one order. So what's happened now is the business has backed up somewhat as our customer has to kind of process that inventory and get it into the supply chain They've been very effective in building demand, but these restrictions on, on import permits and currencies have had an impact on their business. Additionally, uh, in Q3, the legacy business sales of 268,000, uh, once again, was about half of was, what it was uh, in the year ago period. We had some significant climatic effects uh, in Western Canada where most of the cereal crop is grown and uh, that resulted in conditions that uh, that had a, a severe dampening effect on our sales for the quarter. If we look on a nine month basis, pharmaceutical sales were 14.87 million, up 10% versus 2017. In Canada, that was 13 and a half million in sales, up 13%. And uh, measured in units, once again, uh, Ferramax, 150 in powder, both up 8%, Repagine up 24%, Cathagel up 17%, and the Agaton system up 107%. So overall, the Canadian business continuing to grow, uh, gaining share on a number of those products. We took pricing in uh, 2018 and uh, still continue to gain share in the marketplace. But the, uh, the YTD sales in Ferramax through nine months at 1.36 million, uh, down 15%. Uh, doesn't look as uh, stark as a 50% drop, uh, but nevertheless, uh, not satisfactory to us. We expect this instability to uh, persist uh, or to be in place for, for a couple of quarters, uh, not to persist over the long term. Our partner has been very effective in building demand in the marketplace and uh, subsequent to some of these issues, they have received uh, uh, permissions to import and uh, we have been paid for orders. And so we, we think that, uh, that, that it's short-term choppiness, but it, it clearly has had an impact on the business so far this year and uh, it might persist for a quarter or two more. I wanted to talk a little bit about the SysView business. Uh, I have spoken in the past about how the sales cycle on this product has been longer than we had anticipated. We have been making progress on the brand uh, through this year. The thing that we have noticed as well, though, is the long implementation cycle. We've gone, in some cases, in the most extreme, where, where a hospital a urology group has made the decision and had hospital executive aligned to moving ahead with implementation, and that implementation taking up to 12 months. Now, that, that is extreme. Uh, but we, we see it running anywhere from three to four months after a positive decision to 12 months. So that has, has backed us up a little bit with, with our expected volumes for this year. So despite the significant progress in number of sites that are operational, we have not seen the unit volume uh, keep pace with the new sites. So we started the year with two hospital sites operational. We're now at seven. And subsequent to the end of the quarter, we had an eighth site uh, purchase SysView and is in the process of installing their blue light uh, cystoscopy equipment. And we expect that site to be live before the end of the year. So that will bring us to eight live sites. Uh, that is uh, all in Ontario and British Columbia. Uh, we do have an additional nine hospital sites that have either completed a successful evaluation or have 
made a decision to proceed to implementation without an evaluation. So overall, the sales volume growth looks impressive at 220%, but it's off a very low base. Um, but it gives us a foundation to continue to move this business forward. I think uh, uh, it would be remiss for me to not include a comment about what our expectations are for this business uh, long term. We think it's going to continue to grow. Uh, it's going to continue to progress. We've got uh, a very strong support from healthcare professionals, but uh, we have moderated somewhat our expectations for the volume and revenue that this brand can contribute as we go uh, out in, into the future. Wanted to comment a little bit on activity during the year. From a governance perspective, Larry Andrews and Sarah Elford joined our board of directors in January, replacing two long-serving directors who retired. Uh, in May at our annual meeting, Joseph Arkiri joined our board uh, to replace another retiring director. And Joseph is now the chair of our audit committee. Also in May, Fairmax was named the number one recommended iron supplement brand in Canada for the third consecutive year. And what's impressive here is that uh, the, the percentage of physicians and pharmacists surveyed has grown in each of those three years uh, to the point where we've, we've now got 43% of physicians recommending Fairmax as their number one choice and 35% of pharmacists. Also in 2018, uh, in September specifically, Alfred D'Souza, our long-serving Vice President of Finance and CFO, uh, retired from the company. And in the same month, Robert March joined us as Vice President of Finance and CFO. Also in September, Joost van der Mark joined Bioscient as our Vice President of Corporate Development. And finally, Bioscient was named to the Growth 500 ranking of the fastest growing companies for the sixth consecutive year. I wanted to take a couple minutes and comment on our product portfolio and our product life cycle. This is a graphic uh, that you will have seen in our MDNA. It's featured in our MDNA for uh, quite a number of years. So this is how we look at the, the life cycle of products. Uh, you can see here that uh, in the launch and growth phase, we've got a number of assets that are uh, launched in the Canadian market and also internationally. And we really see those as the foundation of growth for 2019. We have three assets, that would be two cardiovascular products and a women's health product that are in the Health Canada approval process, where the launch of those pr uh, products is conditioned on approval by Health Canada. So it's now uh, moving into the second half of November. We don't have approval, and we've uh, got to look at uh, the likelihood of, of launching those products uh, next year. And I think it's, it's at this uh, point unlikely that they would fuel growth for 2019. Uh, we're looking at those more for 2020 and beyond. Quick look at our balance sheet. So our working capital of 24.3 million, over 90% uh, of that is cash, a cash of 22.6 million. That cash position obviously has been growing. It's up 17% from the December 31 year end of 2017 and uh, we continue to carry no debt in the business. So I want to dig a little bit deeper into the cash, both our cash generation and cash needs for the business. So, you know, with $22.6 million in cash available, uh, that's up 37% from the year ago, September 30th level of $16.5 million and, and almost double what it was uh, two years ago, 24 months ago, September 30th. You see there the, the actual amount of cash generation uh, for the period, so 3.267 uh, through nine months. The amount of cash that we actually need to operate our business above non-cash working capital is somewhere between two and three million dollars. So essentially we have that difference available to us to deploy in investing opportunities to either expand our portfolio uh, through in licensing or acquisition and uh, we've spoken in the past of, of uh, quite a number of uh, in-licensing discussions and or, and or acquisition of in-market assets. So the reality is that um, 
that we have not seen anything on acqu on the acquisition side that kind of meets our financial criteria and portfolio uh, fit criteria. And the likelihood of us making acquisitions, I'd say in the short term, let's define that in that kind of six to 12 months is, is less than certainly our expectation around uh, in licensing activities. And we're really talking about deployment of capital. So the, the amount of capital that we need for in licensing is, is relatively, you know, a fraction of what we would need to make acquisitions. We, we have been observing uh, both activity in the market and in discussion about uh, some potential uh, opportunities. And our point of view is that uh, the market and the pricing in the market doesn't, doesn't meet our, our financial criteria. So we think the, the growth, the path to growth, the likelihood for us to kind of continue to grow the business in addition to the existing portfolio and the assets that we have uh, already in license and are going through Health Canada uh, approval process are going to be further in licensing deals with kind of some choppiness in the markets and the equity markets and rising interest rates. I think there may be some opportunities that present themselves to us uh, as we progress and uh, we're just going to have to continue to be patient. You can see the impact that uh, our patience has had on our return on equity uh, on this chart as uh, shown to you in the, the thick blue line going from a 48% ROE in 2014 full year to a t uh, trailing 12 months on, on September 30th of this year of 24%. That's really been a function of the, the uh, cash <clears throat> in the business. As that cash position has grown, uh, measured over the, the, uh, the time that you see on this chart has gone from just under 8 million to uh, 22.6 million, and that obviously has had an impact on our ROE. So we're obviously paying attention to that, keeping an eye on it and, um, and continue to work on deployment opportunities. And uh, we'll see, see what that looks like uh, over the next uh, short while. Wanted to take a quick look at our earnings per share. So on the right hand side of this chart, you see our EPS in, in full year segments, so 2013 through 2017, where it was 36 cents. Uh, on the left, you see our last eight quarters. So the, the uh, trailing 12 month EPS of 38 cents versus 34 in the previous 12 is up 12%. Uh, but on a, on a Q3 to Q3, uh, we're flat, and Q2 versus uh, Q2 year ago, we're flat as well. So this is a quick snapshot of our uh, position in the market with a number of shares issued and uh, options for a total of, of just uh, over 14,675,000. So I wanted to conclude today's presentation with a, a couple of thoughts about how our business is progressing and, and what we see as our priorities as we move into 2019. Uh, we're intensely focused on uh, receiving Health Canada product approval so that we can launch new products into the marketplace. Uh, we are also working on several uh, portfolio expansion opportunities either in the agreement finalization uh, or term sheet finalization stage. Some of these have taken some longer time uh, for diligence and some other, some other factors. Uh, we're also uh, continuing to grow our brands in the Canadian market. We see continued growth opportunity for those and uh, some of what we're working on um, may leverage off of the presence that we've already built with some of our brands in the market. And, uh, and finally, we're uh, working on removing roadblocks for uh, the continued growth of our Fairmax business internationally. Um, in the key market where we've, we've had some, some hurdles to, uh, to overcome, our partner has been very strong in, in building a demand in the marketplace. So we just need to kind of work together with them on some uh, workarounds so that we can get product to market to fill that demand. So our business is fundamentally strong and profitable. profitable. Our team is engaged on a daily basis on continuing to grow that, uh, that base that we've built. 
We've recently uh, completed our 2019 budget process and based on that we expect further growth from the current portfolio and uh, as we prepare for, for a launch activity in the future. Thank you for your continued interest in uh, Bioscient and I look forward to reporting on our progress in future quarters. Thank you.